Well, welcome to part three of Tank Tour 2024. And today I want to share with you some updates on these tanks behind me. And then later we're going to take a look at where I am in my repairing and pond plant production. All the preparations I'm making to grow out and sell some of these plants in the spring and summer. I've also put together a few mini ponds out in the greenhouse and we'll take a look at those as well. Well, in my 20 gallon, I got some new stock. I've got six rainbow shiners, two pandagaras, four nerite snails, and six amano shrimp. Now, I'm not sure if we're going to see any of the amano shrimp today. They're pretty small and they, of course, are very clear, so it's difficult to spot them. But uh, I'm most excited, I think, about these rainbow shiners. I've got six of them, and I'm not sure if I have any males in the bunch. You know, they're, they are not in their full color right now, but hopefully in the next few weeks, you know, spring is coming, we'll get them outside and see if we can get them to color up. I'm hoping at least for one or two males, because I would like to try to breed them, uh, either in an outdoor pond or in a dedicated aquarium in my greenhouse where I'll try to collect the eggs. So we'll see how that goes. But overall, I'm really pleased with how this tank is doing. The plants have really just been growing. They're, they just, they're healthy. And I've had to trim back the red rotala a few times as well as the narrow leaf pogostemon. And this is the best that these crypts have done since I got them like two years ago. They just have not been in the right setup before this tank and they stayed pretty small but they're getting nice and big now and beautiful really enjoying those the lucky bamboo you can see it's growing up in the back I did not really intend for it to grow up from the bottom like that because all of it was above the tank and I have recently trimmed everything above the tank because it was hitting the light up here but it is interesting to see how this lucky bamboo sends out sprouts uh, from the base and they grow up through the water and now I'm having to kind of remove that back part of the lid in order to let these plants emerge from the water so that's a pretty cool experiment there now I have you know a plenum uh, filter in here under gravel filter modified to be a plenum and uh, since adding the new fish uh, I added a hang on the back filter just to help increase water flow specifically for the rainbow shiners since they do come from a river system they're used to faster flowing water and this is still not fast flowing by any means but it is better than it was and i'm finally getting this new light dialed in this is the wills 165 watt full spectrum aquarium light and um it's yeah it's pretty bright and thankfully it has a a couple of dials on there where you can adjust the colors you can adjust the intensity of the light and I've only got it at 5 and it goes up to 10 so uh, but you know one thing I've really appreciated about this light is that it's great for a riparium setup because you can hang the light this high above the tank and still have plenty of light down for the aquarium plants and I did a, a review and unboxing video of the wheels aquarium light so be sure to check that video out. And before too long, I'll be making another video uh, updating this light, a one year update. Because it has been interesting to see how this light has worked over the course of a year. And I do have a few white cloud minnows in here that I've had for a while now. And I've had a, a kind of a tough time getting a colony established. Um, I, I've kept them outdoors mostly in, in the greenhouse but I should have been removing the fry as they were born, and I was not doing that. I was thinking there was enough vegetation for the fry to be hiding in, and apparently that was not the case. But uh, maybe this summer I can get these white clouds back outside and try them again, and this time remove the fry as I see them. One of the pandagoras, they're pretty interesting little fish. It's my first time keeping them. And this one here, he kind of gets aggressive sometimes. You know, he'll be chasing the rainbow shiners around like that, you can see. And uh, not sure what that's about. Maybe it's just part of their nature. But anyway, no harm, no foul, I guess. There's plenty of room for everybody. And thankfully, the, much of the pearl weed at the surface is starting to make a comeback. I only had one or two little sprigs 
and they were kind of stuck at the back of the tank just kind of as floating plants but uh, of course you can't see from the top because of all the duckweed but anyway yeah the pearl weeds kind of making a comeback so I might try to take some of it out and try to propagate it the duckweed I've been removing uh, most of it probably once a week and I'll take it out and feed it to the goldfish out in the greenhouse it works out pretty well so the 29 gallon looks a little bit different I had if you remember riparian plants growing almost all the way up to the light on this tank and it was so lush and beautiful for so long and then I started having problems with a tiny tiny little insect called thrips and what they do is they have piercing and sucking mouth parts where they pierce the leaf tissue and uh, to, to suck the nutrients out of the leaves and then the leaves get contorted and start having necrotic areas like you see on the, the margin of that one and so the leaves come out and they're misshapen and have yellow spots and all that so unfortunately I had that problem going and I just decided to clear cut everything down and get rid of all that foliage and as the new stuff was growing back I was going to start you know consistently wiping the leaves you know I can't spray anything on here because it's too much of a risk of it getting in the tank despite my efforts you know the thrips are still around still messing up the the leaves so I'm to the point now where I'm thinking about just taking out all of the pothos the philodendron and the money tree um, now the parlor palm I cut it back and it's starting to grow out again it doesn't seem to be affected by the thrips so I'll be redoing this tank and in some ways it's a shame because I really have been enjoying these roots in the background of this tank but it's another chance to try something new and um, you know try to use some plants that are more resistant to the thrips and there may be a way to control them uh, better than what I've tried I just haven't found it yet but you know that's how it is you know we have to overcome obstacles problem solve and all that kind of stuff so you know recently I made the video about this DIY filter and uh, so check that out if you haven't seen it it's actually doing really well the video is and this filter is doing pretty well too and I've got the parlor palms growing in it and um, since the video I started putting some Java moss in there trying to see if I can get like a little moss carpet growing over the uh, lava rock so anyway I'm thinking about continuing this making uh, another DIY filter putting it next to this one and siphoning off of this first one so that way I'll have some some more plants in the back it's probably going to be either some more par parlor palm or I may try out actually some of the um, plants that I just recently ordered and recently got in they're, they're they're pond plants but they could work in a riparian setting as well I'll have to show you those in a few minutes and oddly enough as if on cue this actually just came in the mail as I'm shooting this video that was really strange so anyway it's yeah it's a separation box didn't really plan on getting into this today but can't help myself kind of excited about it yes it's it's like the fluval it's just a different brand it's a kind of a knockoff brand but it's the same design as the fluval breeder box so that's the basic box right there so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna plant it figure out what i'm gonna plant in there and hang it right next to the uh the first box on the back there and just run a siphon tube from the first one to the second one anyway that's cool can't wait to get started on that project as far as the fish are concerned though everybody's healthy uh, still got these these 11 neon tetras and unfortunately they're not eating <laughs> they're not eating the guppy fry so the guppies are starting to really uh, proliferate in here I don't know if you can see the fry swimming around so um, anyway I'll have to thin out the the guppies and relocate those fries somewhere else but um, so what I'm thinking about doing as far as the uh, the aquascape I want to keep it with with this you know black water vibe this of course is not a true black water tank but it, I've definitely been trying to to have that vibe going here 
and so I'd like to have some more drift to it. I have more, this is a camellia stump, and I've actually got some more uh, camellia stumps like this that I can uh, add to, and it, I think that would be cool. Um, as far as underwater plants go, I may try to add another Amazon sword, uh, hoping that it will stay small like that. As long as I don't fertilize, it should stay small. But uh, I may try some other things too. You know, I've got other smaller aquarium plants. I could add some more Sagittaria along the bottom or Juncus repens or something like that. But anyway, so still got some figuring out to do on that one. But one of the benefits to having the DIY filter and having the plants growing out of them is that if I do encounter more problems with thrips or other insects, I can simply take these filters off, take them outside, and of course, you know, cover the uh, cover the stones and everything. But I can spray something like an insecticidal soap, you know, something some organic, uh, you know, pest control. And that would be a lot more effective than not being able to to spray and having the plants stuck in the tank and you know just constantly having to wipe the leaves, which obviously didn't work very well for me anyway. Um, so yeah, that's another benefit, and I'm I'm looking forward to trying that out if if that problem occurs again. I'll be a little more limited as to what kind of plants I can grow. I mean, you know, I could grow something like a peace lily in there, but it would uh, the roots would fill it up pretty quickly, I think. So, you know, if I do if I did have a peace lily, I would I would have it planted directly in the water and let the roots go go down. So I may have some of both. You know, I may try to do a peace lily in the corner, and and then just the the hang on back filters that are planted in the back. So this will be an opportunity to discover yet another dimension to planted aquariums. There's always a new dimension, no matter, you know, no matter what level you're at, and no matter uh, how advanced you feel like you are at the moment, there's always a new dimension. We just gotta be creative and keep uh, trying different approaches. I started setting up this grow rack to get uh, some aquarium plants started, growing them, of course, emergent style. And I've got Juncus repens down in there, Got some alternate thera, Renecki. Look in there and kind of see. I just planted these up yesterday. And I've got some hydrocotyl tripartita in there. It's a pretty fast grower from what I can tell. And then I've got some dwarf hair grass. Still got to label these boxes. There's the dwarf hair grass in there. Kind of hard to see. Probably time to water them again. We've got a few odds and ends up here that uh, I need to consolidate a little bit better. Here I've got uh, Java moss and I've got some uh, rocks on the bottom so that it, the moss isn't sitting in the water the whole time. It stays moist in there, stays nice and humid, but it's not sitting in the water so it's less likely to have algae growing in it. And here's actually some Acorus, some Ogon Acorus and horsetail equisetum that I've had, just look, have been growing them in these pots for the past couple of years. I'm gonna divide those up into the ponds. And then I've got some cannas that are actually starting to sprout right now. It's been a little bit warm here uh, for the past week or so, but it's gonna get cool again. So hopefully those cannas won't freeze. But my dwarf umbrella sedge uh, still hasn't emerged yet. So here in the greenhouse, so some pond plants that just came in the other day are this variegated water celery, which is a beautiful variegation, and it's got uh, pink in it as well. And it's very hardy, spreads fast. Got some Lobelia cardinalis right there, cardinal flower. This will be actually growing above the water and will be flowering. And then I've got some dwarf equisetum, which it's so cool because it obviously looks like equisetum. It resembles grass more than anything, and it's softer. So in some random pots here and there, like these two, then over in the mixing tray, got pickerel weed, Pontidaria, which is just starting to emerge. I divided up my group of them outside the other day and planted them up in these pots. So these pots are ready to go in a pond. They've got the right media and everything. 
umbrella sedge there. All the acorus is doing well that I divided, potted up into four inch pots. Some more Pontidaria. And some of these cannas I still have to divide up. I showed you in uh, part one of the tour this Tropicana and then the Bengal Tiger. So those are going to be pond plants as well. And of course, my penny wart, I need to divide this up. My walking iris is getting ready to bloom right there. Bloom about to come out. I'm looking forward to that. But here are two of my ponds that I put together. And of course, this one. If you saw the build video, I constructed this stone kind of water fountain, and uh, that was pretty cool, very tedious. But the moss is hanging on pretty well. All this moss is getting moisture that's being wicked from this little place where I left a hole for the water to run out. The pump is coming up through the back and pushing water forward. But I left this one little place open for the water to come through. The moss is wicking it onto uh, the stone in different areas and even all the way to back here it's not wicking to the point where it's dripping off everywhere but it's just enough to keep the moss wet so that's really cool to see on this side however it's staying a little more dry i've been watering that side myself but probably should have designed it better so that it would wick but anyway hydrocotyl tripartita right here is really growing leaves are getting bigger it's spreading it's getting thicker so that's that's fun to see in the the junkus repens hasn't really grown a whole lot it's been on a little bit of new growth but i think once the weather gets warmer it will definitely start taking off and this is a juga chocolate chip a juga or bugle weed and it's actually going to be blooming soon if you haven't seen the, the build video on this, do check it out because it, uh, it was a lot of fun building this. A lot of work, but a lot of fun as well. And this next pond I just put together a few days ago. Got some more chorus and bugleweed. I love using these two together because of the colors. They contrast each other very well and there's different leaf textures going on. So that's it's fun to use the two together. Got some horsetail in here. and. Uh, Pontidaria starting to come up. This is actually a type of K-Rex that I dug up out of the yard. I'm kind of experimenting to see how well it grows. It, it grows in moist areas outside, but I've never tried growing it as a pond plant. We'll see how that goes. All these floaters, I'm trying not to thin them out too much because once it gets warm, I'm going to be putting all these floaters outside in the outside ponds. Well, now we've come full circle back to the greenhouse. So now you've seen, you've seen everything that I've got going on at the moment. And I'm just looking forward to spring, looking forward to getting these plants moved outside, getting my pond plants set up, and growing them out to sell, and building some more ponds. So I've got a lot going on this spring and summer. I'm so excited about it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the tour. And if you haven't seen the other uh, tours, the other parts of this tour, be sure to see parts one and two. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys later.